This is why you tip. I get paid two thirteen an hour as a bartender and a server. Um, I should have made one fifty eighty one, but because I have to have Social Security, Medicare, and the income tax taken out, I was paid nine dollars and twenty eight cents for seventy hours of work. Imagine if professors' income was determined on whether the students liked what they were being taught. Imagine if doctors were paid based on whether the patients were happy with the diagnosis. It just doesn't happen in any other profession. And the reason it happens in this profession is a history of race and class and gender in our country. It was an extra or bonus that aristocrats or nobles gave to serfs or vassals, but always on top of a wage. When the idea came to the States in the 1850s, it was because of rich Americans traveling to Europe and coming back and trying to show off that they knew the rules of aristocratic Europe. At first, Americans, you know, rejected it as a vestige of feudalism, said we are a democracy. But that idea changed uh, right after emancipation of slavery when the restaurant lobby wanted the right to hire newly freed slaves, not pay them anything at all and have them live entirely on tips. So we went from $0 at emancipation to $2.13 an hour, which is the current federal minimum wage for tipped workers in the U.S. And actually, in most cases, workers who earn a sub-minimum wage get a paycheck that says zero. This is not a paycheck because the wage is so low, it goes entirely to taxes, which means they are living just as they did at emancipation entirely off of their tips. In 1938, when everybody got the right to the minimum wage for the first time in the U.S. as part of the New Deal, um, millions of black workers actually were excluded. Farm workers who were mostly black, domestic workers who were mostly black, and tipped restaurant workers who were mostly black, mostly women, were left out. So they have lobbied very successfully uh, for, for 81 years, you know, since the New Deal was passed, that they should be allowed to not pay their own workers, that instead, because their workers get wages, they should get away with paying zero, one, or two dollars an hour. For some, not all, I think there is a there is a relishing of the power dynamic that customers have over these workers, that they are at their beck and call, that they have to put up with whatever they say or do or however they touch them or treat them or talk to them because they leave a tip. I remember working in restaurants and, you know, you would have someone say something extremely inappropriate to you or you'd have someone touch you. And the thing is, is, it would be the 28th of the month, the 29th of the month. And the first of the next month was rolling right around and you had a rent check to pay. And so you were more likely to stand up for yourself and to reject sexual harassment on the 15th of the month or maybe the 10th of the month when you could pick up an extra shift to make up for telling that guy to go buzz off. Workers in our industry struggle with three times the poverty rate of the rest of the U.S. workforce, use food stamps at double the rate of the rest of the U.S. workforce, meaning the women who put food on our tables can't afford to feed their own children. And a good third are parents, single mothers with children. And all of this economic precarity exacerbates that power dynamic that we talked about. Tips have been so decreased during the, the pandemic. And I think workers have kind of a light bulb or, you know, realization has dawned that this has never been a reliable source of income. 
workers are finally in this country standing up and saying, it's just not worth it anymore and leaving this industry. If you listen to the National Restaurant Association, you would think there are no restaurants in these seven states, that they've somehow you know, killed the economy, all jobs are lost, so no small businesses, when in fact these seven states have higher restaurant industry sales, higher job growth in the restaurant industry, higher small business growth rates, and we have higher rates of tipping because it turns out when you pay people better, they tip better. But most importantly, we see one half the rate of sexual harassment in the restaurant industry because it turns out when you pay women a full minimum wage with tips on top, they don't have to put up with as much from customers. They can reject harassment from customers because they can count on a wage from their boss. Even if you don't care about these workers, but you really want to be able to go back to your you know, Sunday brunch with your friends. We have to change the way people are paid if we want to return to an industry in which workers have the ability to survive while working in restaurants. <laughs>